Uh, we will have the honor to have uh, Richard Wu to finish the day with a talk about historical consistency, causal relevance, and historical token causal description, a causal model modeling account. Uh, please, Richard. Thank you. But after I send it, the, the abstract, I actually resolve oh, the paper 80%. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a new one. So, um, um, it's my pleasure to, to, to be here to present my ideas and thank you very much for allowing this to happen. But Alex, Alex I won't talk about metaphysics. Okay. And for some reason, I don't want to say that I'm going to talk about methodology as well. <laughs> so, I'm just going to present some very basic ideas. And I actually construct seven formal conditions. Some of them are very worthy, so I will use uh, either graphs or some uh, like a, a case to explain the formal conditions. And for this historical causal conception, it's all about human history. I only talk about human history. So some basic idea. So this is the case. So and this is the only case. <laughs> <laughs> so had Chamberlain implemented an anti-appeasement policy, he didn't have backed down from his reality. So this is a, co a historical causal ascription inquiry, whether or not this is suitable. So uh, normally we use two variables, a cause variable and effect variable, and try to see whether or not we can build up some sort of equation to explain. But for historical study, this is a little bit different. They ask for the so-called historical consistencies. They'd like to know whether or not this kind of fact is like, uh, was likely to occur in the actual history, in, in the actual course of history. They, don't want, they are not doing metaphysics. They are doing fact-based science. It's not metaphysics. So the thing is that how to explain historical consistency, how to formulate the idea of likely to occur in the actual course of history. So this, they, they want to capture the peculiarity of historical causation. And history is famous with unmanipulability. You can't manipulate it. So how can I use a causal model that can do that? That sounds oxymoronic. Right? But the thing is that the proposal is using a historical thought experiment. That is, uh, depending on causal generalizations or theories of relevant disciplines and historical facts as evidence to create a ground to justify a thoughtful intervention. So that's the idea. And the method, method is counterfactual backtracking analysis. Now what is counterfactual backtracking analysis? It's backtrack from the target counterfact, historical counterfact, to its precondition. So apparently those relevant disciplines, the causal generalization of theory, are, uh, are going to assist uh, to establish what is the precondition of which. So that's, that's the role they play. And continue the, the backtracking process until we find a historical fact to anchor, to anchor the backtracking process. So that's, that's the basic picture. But there's a lot of things you need to explain that what's going on here. So uh, I set up a probability distribution uh, requirement. That is, I, I asked for the probability distri distribution between a historical counterfact and its factual counterpart to be a, approximately equal or even higher. So that's the idea. Now, you may say that, well, it's too ideal, right? But my job is to formalize those causal conception, those causal conception. And give this distribution, I can do that. And well, what is the, the, the suitable or reasonable uh, probability distribution threshold? Actually, it depends on historians' expertise, not depends on philosophers. So I just set up an ideal condition, and based on that, to explain how to <coughs> form a historical causal conception based on causal model. So this is the case. So this is a counterfeit, apparently a counterfeit, because Chaplin only implemented a appeasement policy. So we backtrack this precondition, and they said it's the they need a strong national defense force, so that you can. Uh, implement some unyielding diplomacy. So they think that, okay, in, in, this, in this case, the present case, this is the, the, the UK sufficient armament after the First World War. And it is still a counterfeit, so they want to keep backtracking and backtrack to its precondition, and they think, okay, a hawkish cabinet 
might think, not might, must think that a strong national defense force is essential. But still, that's a uh, uh, kind of that because Chamberlain led a dovish cabinet. So they backtrack to the precondition of this hawkish cabinet, that is, they are hawkish cabinet members occupying substantial positions and even becoming the prime minister. And this is actually a historical fact. There are three. There's Eden, Cooper, and Churchill. So there are three. So this is a historical fact that we can use to end the bad tracking uh, process. But the, the thing is why and how. So this is the graph so far. This is the graph so far. That is hawkish cabinet, sufficient rearmament, uh, uh, peaceful anti appeasement policy, and uh, the success or non success of Sudan defense. So that's the, the, the graph so far. And this is the variable setup, and I, I don't need to go into the detail. And this is the <coughs> equation set. This equation set is actually saying this respectively, hawkish, dovish cabinet closely connected. Uh, sufficient, insufficient rearmament, causally connected to unyielding, yielding diplomacy, causally connected to Hitler's backing down or not backing down. So that's that's the equation. What the equation said. Uh, apparently, the, the the causal profile of the variable FC is not fully explored yet, because we we can't see FC and plays any role there. That is hawkish cabinet members. So my idea is this. I assume that this backtracking is a successful backtracking. And I want to, based on the causal, causal modeling, to formalize the correctness condition of a successful backtracking, based on which I can explain the adequacy of historical consistent ascription. And on top of that, I can explain the adequacy of historical causal ascription. So that's the basic idea. So as far as I can give those correct conditions, then I can explain that each historical counterpart their consistency. And therefore, if two historical, uh, uh, two variables, one is the other's immediate descendant variable, and both, uh, uh, one value of them uh, represent counterfacts and are both historically consistent, then the causal description is added. So that's, that's the rough idea. So the most important job is just to establish those correctness conditions. That's what I said, the seven formal conditions. So now seven formal conditions. And we can see that for each bad tracking, they can, each bad tracking, it consists of two parts. One part is bad tracking to a historical fact, and another consists of bad tracking to a historical counterfact. So we can talk about them. They have different formal structure. So first of all, a fact. So this is FCM, right? So that is, uh, it is hawkish cabinet members occupying pivotal position, blah, blah, blah. So that's the, the anchoring fact. But apparently, by itself, it cannot play a full course role to the, the uh, hawkish cabinet because the actual cabinet is dovish. What's dovish? So it can't play the, 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 the full course role. Otherwise, it's incoherent or inconsistent. So, but, but we have reason to say that at that historical uh, juncture, we can assume an, uh, something can re uh, uh, represent an exogenous variable that we can thoughtfully intervene in. So that's the idea. We, we can add FCM here, and this one is the exogenous variable. And this ex exogenous variable representing contingent fac factors related to the payment of the uh, hawkish or dovish cabinet. So probably just relate to the party election, some contingent factors. And second of all, the default position is for, for its value to be zero because we actually had a dovish cap. So the, the, the value is actually zero. And third, that's the, 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 the requirement. I asked the V, set the value of V, the distrib probability distribution of the values of V, the variable V, is the satisfy the requirement. That is at least approximately equal, or if V is one is even higher. So that's the idea. Then why? Based on what I can assume this. So that's why anchoring fact is important because if there are hawkish members occupying pivotal positions in a in a cabinet, <coughs> meaning that the dovish cabinet actually didn't have a landslide victory in party election. Otherwise, they just they don't need any hawkish 
cabinet members occupy substantial positions. So this gives us sufficient evidence to support that the uh, election result was close. At least to a certain extent, it's close. But it's not up to me to decide the threshold, as I said. So I just assume it's very close. So the, now the question is, the fact is, for v, the value of, of V is one, uh, zero, sorry. So how can we intervene that? How to do that? So this is the, the, the values of actually, uh, actually that's Hawkish cabinet or Dovish cabinet, where R is determined by the function of the values of HC M and B. That is the, the, the historical fact and the exogenous variable. And the function is like this. So only when at the value of HC M and B are both one, uh, HC, the value of HC is one, otherwise zero. But why I can, can, can get this result, why this function is correct? So let's consider. First of all, FCM is one, is important for, it, for why this explains why it anchors the, the, the backtracking process. You don't need to backtrack further. So that's why it is there. It, it indicates that it's there. So this is actually a combination of historical fact. That is, there are, there were hawkish captain members and the, the, the exogenous variables value is zero as the de default position. So this one is fine, right? So there is no hawkish capital, it's dovish. Oh, I forgot to say, for elusive purpose, all, all variables are binary. For elusive purpose, they are all binary. So this is first possibility. And if, if there were no hawkish capital members, then, then n, uh, the value of v is zero, so there is no hawkish cabinet. There were no hawkish, there was no hawkish cabinet. It's quite clear. But how about this one? Hawkish faction actually won, but there are no, there were no hawkish cabinet members occupying any substantial position. I think we don't need to consider this one. This is this is the real oxymoron. Right? So we don't need to consider this one. So then I explain why the function like this. So why explain this function? Because I think this is the formal structure between these variables when you backtrack to an anchoring fact. So we can have the first three conditions of the, the, the three conditions of the first set of formal conditions. And the first one is that the, the, the three variables, the variables are so it's, it's very wordy. So basically it's the backtracking counter fact, that is HC, and the backtracked uh, historical fact, that's HCM, and the exogenous variable, V, and they have the formal structure categorized by the equation, by the equation. So that's the first condition. The second is that the backtracking counter fact, the backtrack historical fact, those two variables are endogenous, and only V is exogenous. So we can only thoughtfully intervene in V. And the third is that the, the requirement, the probability distribution requirement, because I want to talk in the ideal situation. So this has to be, be met. So this is the, the three formal conditions of the first set. So about backtracking to a historical fact, backtracking to an anchoring fact. So that's the idea. So this, the second part is about backtracking to a counter fact. So I use this as an example that is Backtrack on sufficient rearmament, that is RS is 1, to a hawkish cabinet, that is FC is 1. So using this part of backtracking to explain the formal structure. So apparently a hawkish cap cabinet is not the only causal factor. For example, uh, the economy after World War One has had to be booming, otherwise there, 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 there was simply no money, no budget to, to foster the rearmament. So that's simply not possible. So there are some other causal factors related to uh, the realization of a faster realm. So I can use U as standing for an auxiliary variable. It stands for the all cause, the causal complex that representing all the causally relevant constituent factors to the realization of a sufficient realm. So I just want a, 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 a variable as such, 
represent the, the network output or collective output, they have, there must be a very complicated structure inside. But I don't need to discuss this. I just say that, okay, all of this, you can use a variable representative. So now we can talk about the formal profile of this batch tracking. So the value of Rs are determined by the functions of the values of HC and U. HC is hawkish, sufficient rearmament, or insufficient rearmament, hawkish or dovish cabinets, and U is the auxiliary variable. And the function is like this. Then again, why it is like this. So we can think about it, go through it. The first possibility is that it's a dovish cabinet, and the auxiliary variable's value is 1. It's a 10. So this one, if it's a dovish, so it's 0. Because it's fat. This part represents fat. Actually, the, the cabinet was dovish. And actually, there were no faster rearmament. So this is fine. And the second one is that a dovish uh, cabinet and the uh, auxiliary variable's value is zero, meaning that the needed causal complex wasn't there. There's no money, for example. So then no faster rearmament is reasonable. The third one is that there's a hawkish cabinet, but still there's no money. So the meaning that the faster rearmament is still not possible, so the value of RS is zero. And we can notice that when the value of the auxiliary variable is zero, there is no faster rearmament because it has simply no money. So apparently based on that, because I already assumed that this bad tracking is successful, it's sensible, so since it's sensible, so the default position must be U is 1. That must be the default position. Otherwise, bad track from the, the, the whole bad tracking makes no sense. Why do you want to backtrack from a sufficient rearmament to a hawkish cabinet when there's simply, there was simply no money to fasten the rearmament process? If that's, that's the case, why, why the backtracking is sensible or successful? So because I assume that the backtracking is successful, so therefore the, the, the value of U must be 1. That is a fact. It has to be that. And given that the value of U is 1, the values of Rs are actually determined by the values of Hc, given by this setup. So that's why I say I don't only need one case, I just assume that it is a successful backtracking, and based on that, I can formalize the, the correctness condition. So this is the extending of Cc. Expanding of Cc, we can add. So this. This is the, the subscript, stands for the auxiliary variable, which level. Since the backtracking structure are similar, so actually we can put the other two. The structure uh, is exactly the same. So now we can have a second set of formal conditions. The first one I'm saying is actually this, using cases is simple, simple, much more simple. The variable Rs. That's, that's the bad track team counterfact. And the variable FC, that's bad tracked counterfact. And the auxiliary variable are all endogenous. All endogenous because it's coming from the fact part, not the counterfact part. And the second one is that the auxiliary variable is fixed to be one. The value of it is fixed to be one. Meaning that it, is, it represents a factual background condition. That's the factual background condition of 10. So it's fact. It's all there. It depends the, the character of the, the, the party faction. So that's it. So of course, historical evidence might show otherwise. Say, well, not the money was in there. But if that's the case, it doesn't mean that my, my formulation is wrong. No, my formulation is still correct. What, what goes wrong is the assumption. That assuming that the backtracking is successful, they only show that the backtracking is not successful. I need to find a new example. So, although historical evidence might show otherwise, that doesn't mean my, my formalization has been failed. It's different. And finally, uh, since the auxiliary variable uh, value is one, set to be one, or fixed to be one, 
So the backtracking, the, uh, the value of the backtracking variable is determined by the value of backtracked variable. That is, RS values are determined by the values of HC. That is, sufficient rearmament and uh, Hawkish or Dovish category. So that's the, the second set of three conditions. So, new equations are. New equations are. Now we have this, we must have a seven condition. That is using using pictures. Simple, uh, simple. That is, there is no causal connection between auxiliary, auxiliary variables. That's one thing. Another thing is that there's no causal connection between exogenous variable and the auxiliary variable and the immediate descending level. There's no causal connection. So let's explain a little bit. Let's assume that URS is zero when B is one. Let's assume this. Assuming that there's some sort of causal connection. But the problem is this, that if URS zero, uh, value is zero, meaning that it fails to satisfy 2.2. That is, it, it's not a factual background condition. And I only said that, assuming that the, the backtracking is successful, that you, a singular, a singular variable has to be fixed to be one, representing the factual background condition. So this fail uh, uh, formal condition 2.2. And can we say that it's possible that URS is one when V is one, but the problem is V is actually zero, meaning that URS is actually zero, then again it fails to satisfy the 2.2 condition. So there's no no causal connection between the exogenous variable and the auxiliary variable at the immediate descendant level. It's not possible. So the second one is that the, about the auxiliary variable, whether or not they can have causal connection. So as said, the value of UA to be Y represents the factual background condition allowed to backtrack from A is zero to RS is one. To make sense the backtracking. Because the money was there, so we can have this backtracking. And apparently URS, the value of URS is one, did the same thing. Meaning that you can backtrack from RS is one, so Julian, to RHC is one, that is Hawkish cabinet. So assuming there is a causal connection between these two auxiliary variable, then it creates a unique problem. The problem is that there is the, now we have a forward causation in a bad tracking analysis. That is like this. Because the reasonableness of the bad tracking from A to RS actually rely on the reasonableness of RS bad tracking to HC. So this, there's a forward character in a bad tracking analysis. And this is just wrong. So that's why there cannot be any causal connection between these auxiliary variables. So, as I said, history, history is a fact-based science. And you can see that these are all facts. The values are all fixed. They are all facts. So causal modeling is a sufficient tool to carve a sensible causal rule out of the chunk of historical fact. That is, History can use these facts to fix the backward conditions and try to use causal generalization or theories of relevant disciplines and other historical facts as evidence to do the backtracking and the kind of factual backtracking analysis. <coughs> and causal modeling just help to present the formal conditions, the correctness condition of a successful backtracking. And as I said, once this is set, we can explain each, each uh, for example, HC is zero as a historical counter fact. The, it, the historical as consistency ascription is adequate because the whole bad tracking is correct. So each, each value represents a historical counter fact are all historically consistent. And any causal relation, except not, not here, every causal connection here or causal, causal ascription here when one is the immediate, at the immediate descendant level, the causal ascription is also adequate. So as far as I can use causal, causal modeling to construct the correctness condition of a successful backtracking, 
and I can use them to explain the adequacy of historical consistent ascription, which are crucial to historian study. And based on that, I can further explain the adequacy of historical causal ascription. Thank you. Questions? I'll start. Could you bring back the... Okay. So, is there, I, I see how you have to exclude a lot of relations to, for the thing to work, but do you not have to exclude, you know, a hawkish cabinet mm. is, is inducing a non-appeasement independently of the rearmament? So do you have to exclude that, that arrow? Oh, I see. You mean that whether or not there's a we are being mm -hmm. perfect because because the cabinet is responsible to the to the anti appeasement so directly or well first of all there's no uh, what's that that's a very that would be a very long cabinet for a very long time but uh, <laughs> no that's uh, how to say that uh, the the causal relation is not true cannot transfer okay so the hawkish cabinet can only be the, the cause of a sufficient movement. Okay. So that's the idea, because it is using actually counterfactual, and counterfactual cannot transfer the causal connection. Unless okay. you, you want okay. to use okay. a lot of the okay. kind of tinkering with all the okay. problems. Okay. So causality could be transitive, but counterfactual is Yeah, that, that would be a problem. No, so so that's, the, that's the, the, the feature of causal Okay. Model. Okay. Model. okay. Okay. It's because it's a counterfactual construction. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Other question? Jonathan, why do you do that? We can, we can call you a day. No, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's call it a day. Shout, shout, you had a... Uh, yeah, uh, this is... No, 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 no. Okay. This is, a, this is really just a curiosity question. So I wonder... Uh, uh, I mean, I know there's some work in just in history, on counterfactual history. And so I wonder if you've seen some analogies between the formal constraints that you're proposing in this kind of approach and just like when historians talk about doing counterfactual history, what kinds of guidelines do they give themselves for like what's good practice? Well, I cannot explain this to you because I, I, I didn't actually spend time to study that. But I, sure. I have been informed that somebody said that, oh, I just read a book. <laughs> Historians are actually doing that. Yeah. And I have been, been, been told that uh, the college, historian colleagues of uh, philosophers, and they are doing things like this. So that, that's that much I know. And the, the funny part is this. I asked my historian colleague back to my college, uh, university. They say that we never use counterfactual reasoning. <laughs> we don't use counterfactual. Ever? No, they use all the time. They <laughs> <laughs> just don't want to admit that. <laughs> we are doing historical study. We don't use counterfactual. <laughs> okay. So Yes, I, I realize like, it would be kind of cool if one thing that, that this work could give is like, so if that, they have these kinds of vague ideas about how to kind of structure this to, to, to get good inferences, and this could help them clarify. Well, that's that's, that that's, cool. that's really the cool. idea. So I'm still working on this paper. Cool. And there are, there are two other options. Uh, one is uh, Alexander Marr trying to use uh, Louis, standard Louisian semantics to say that, okay, we can use that to talk about historical counterfactual reasoning, so whether or not they can build up the historical causal description or causality. I, I, I have seriously thought that that's going to work. I think that's the main, main reason for my historian colleagues saying that we never use counterfactual reasoning. <laughs> possible words. No, 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 this word, this word. Not possible word. Sure. No possible word. Another is actually that. Brandon tried to use ephemeral, ephemeral mechanism to explain historical data descriptions. Mm -hmm. And I didn't spend much time, just read one or two papers of his. But I still think that, uh, I think he's a, he's a kind of mechanism has one essential problem because he thinks that his account is superior than Woolworths because he can explain the hierarchy. <coughs> right. 
So that uh, the, the lower level mechanism is a higher level causal generalization, some of the ideas, something like that. So you can use mechanism to explain causal generalization. And, and when I when I taught this, I and my students, our question is just that what's going to happen at the button level? Right. You must to have a button level that 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 there's no nothing causal going on within the mechanism. That has to be the thing. So basically, I, I think that the balance of the calm, I don't think it can explain historical description, although I don't have an argument. But I know that at least there are two different approaches, not just this one, there are two different approaches. So I will say I probably understood what about 20% of what you were doing, <laughs> but uh, be, because of the lenders, because I couldn't keep right, them, sorry, all the sorry. variables. But, yes. but for whatever this is worth, um, when the British did rearm, they deficit financed it. So the economy did not have to be very good. Right. For yes, for of course, of course. But it has to be good, to be sufficiently fairly good. It cannot be bad. Right? To be has to be oh. to some to some extent. But it's why you no, it was it's terrible when they started. But it's why it's an exogenous variable. It's anything that will create the necessary condition for 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 the blah blah. Well, the exogenous. So the economy. Okay. Dunkirk happens. Britain is being bombed. They're losing their colonies left and right from because of. I mean, this is. They are. Desperately debt financing anything that they're doing. All right. Just to be I, I agree with you, but that's probably true because I'm a, I'm not I'm no historian. <laughs> I was as a historian, that is true. But but the thing is this: I just assume that this backtracking is successful, mm -hmm. right? And I say, if given that it's successful, the formal structure has to be like this, yeah. because if if the value is zero, the backtracking just doesn't make any sense. So you are actually saying that the bad thing is not that successful, which can be true and likely to be true, but I just assume it to be true. But after all, it's just an example. It's just a case. I just I want the formal structure. It doesn't mean that I would defend. Daniel is arguing for a more complex graph, but yes, you don't want, you, you're not so saying not the condition, condition of the graph is false. Actually, actually, <laughs> in the paper, I discuss a bit more. For example, whether or not we can have a bad tracking about this one, that's one possibility. Can we have multiple, multiple precondition, not just one precondition? Whether uh, overdetermination and preemption might might cause any problem? I discuss. So, so that's why at the very beginning I said this is the basic ideas, because I I think that I present this once. I spent thirty minutes to to explain this, as you said. Oh, I just don't remember that. <laughs> so I didn't. But 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 for the record, let me prove this to you. <laughs> it's all there. It's all there. <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking. It's all there. I just don't have time. <laughs> oh, sorry. And uh, really fast. So uh, this model can be used to uh, understand. For example, the causal history of a functional trait, because there is this discussion about functions. Uh, what is a functional effect in Bitcoin in the under? Uh, are we? Uh, they say that a functional tra trait is actually the. The selected effect uh, in the history of the, the system. So they talk about some kind of backward causation mm -hmm. to talk about functionality in organisms. What's the problem? They don't have a model to uh, to put this history. My question is. What are the limitations of variables to know? Mm -hmm. so how many variables we, we have to know to make a history? Because 
in, in history, in general, we have knowledge of a bunch of uh, variations, but in the biological evolution of a system, we don't have, for example, uh, much knowledge because there is a lot of things that happen, uh, mutations and uh, external boundaries uh, change that we don't know what happened. We know, for example, that there was there is a, a kind of animal that had some traits and then another animal that had other traits. But we could say, for example, that a trait that, that we have now is a functional trait because his evolutional history. And that is a backward causation history. Well, first of all, I'm not talking about backward causation. And second of all, I, as I said, I can only talk about human history. Hmm? Human history. Human history. Just human history. Because, it, because the thing, the whole thing is that, I think the last slide <laughs> I didn't <laughs> that. So, as I said, that, that's a, for, there's a chunk of historical facts, a lot of historical facts. Just based on those facts by themselves, it's very difficult to develop a cause, to explain the causal route. So, so, this model, the backtracking analysis, it's backtracking, not backward possession, it's backtracking analysis can help to establish uh, the analysis. And then causal modeling can help to establish the formal conditions to explain why. And at, at, at each level, we need historical facts as evidence. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a chunk. This uh, is a causal chunk. That might be very, very complicated inside. And historian, luckily not me, historian has to look into it to establish it. Because I think that even if they wanted to establish a bad dragon analysis, here, for example, I think the formal conditions are exactly the same. So that's why I just assume that this is a simple but successful backtracking and try to construct the formal conditions of the correctness of this backtracking. And hopefully, this can keep using. So that's why I, I think about discuss the, the, the origin combination creation because they might fail. That the formal conditions are all satisfied, but the causal description is not adequate. That's already the nature of preemption, and I try to explain why this won't this won't cause any problem. So that's that's the thing. So it's all about human history. And there's certainly something I forgot to say. Oh, okay. There's one thing I have to add. One thing that, of course, there must be a limit. You cannot bad track forever, right? I, that's a. I, I read. I, I think it's for me. It's a joke. They said uh, uh, to 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 explain the booming of this Western civilization in the 19th century, that's because the, the, the Greek won the, 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 the portion, the, 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 the war of the portion, because they won. I think, what? <laughs> <laughs> that sort of things. It, it couldn't possibly construct any reasonable backtracking. It's, it's 2,000, more than 2,000 years. That's not possible. So of, of course, it's with the scale limit. But, ah, there's a, there's a usual solution. The actual limit of the scale has to be decided by historians. I, I can't decide that. I can't say that, oh, you can't fair track to more than five months. I can't, how can I say that? Or 10 years? I can't say that. Historians have to decide. That's a thank our speaker. Thank you.